Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. My beloved brothers and sisters, one thing we need to realize is that in everyone's life, there will come a point when enough is enough. I'm talking about our own sins, our own weaknesses. If you take a careful look at verses we read this evening in Salat at Taraweeh, there is one verse that strikes a chord with those who realize and understand its meaning as well as the impact it has had on those before us. If you look at Al-Fudayl ibn Iyad, Rahimahullah, it is said that there was a time in his life when he was not a very straightforward person in terms of obedience of Allah. Weaknesses had overtaken him. He was part of a gang of highway robbers. He used to pinch and steal at one stage in his life. And one day, he decided to come to the masjid for some salah. Allah brought him. And this is why when you come to the masjid, yes, it is your effort, but it is also the acceptance of Allah. Every day we say, So many times in salah, do we ever realize it's the most important dua you're ever going to make. That's why Allah wants you to repeat it in Surah Al-Fatiha. Your salah will not be correct without saying that. Subhanallah, guide us to the straight path. Guide us to the straight path. Guidance is more important than food and drink. Do you realize this? Guidance is more important than the air that you breathe. And even your life, subhanallah. If I were to lose my life now upon guidance, I've actually achieved. And if I were to have a long life with no guidance, I've lost everything. So Allah is telling us that enough is enough. The verse that he heard as he entered the masjid, أَلَمْ يَأْنِ لِلَّذِينَ آمَنُوا أَن تَخْشَعَ قُلُوبُهُمْ لِذِكْرِ اللَّهِ Has the time not come? For the believers to soften their hearts towards the remembrance of Allah, he began to weep. It's as though you are being addressed. You know, the Quran has a power. If you are to go into its meaning, and if you are to go into what it stands for, you'll realize that it will impact you in your life as you need it. And you will wonder, how is this possible? It's as though Allah is addressing me. It's not as though Allah is addressing you. Allah is addressing you. That's the difference. So we need to realize the Quran is so impactful. This evening we heard verses. And by the way, you in Roshni are fortunate with some good taraweeh. May Allah bless the Hufav who are sacrificing to get it done so that you can hear the Quran. But our duty to the Quran is not just hearing it. It's not listening to its melody or the melodious tone or the correct recitation. That is part of the right of the Quran over us. But what is of importance also, Allah says, we have made this Quran easy for dhikr. So is there anyone who is going to do the dhikr? What's the meaning of the term dhikr? Dhikr is the remembrance of Allah. Dhikr is the memory that you and I have. Dhakira. So Allah's made it easy in more than one aspect. Number one, to memorize it. It's so simple to memorize. Allah is asking you a question. Is there anyone from amongst you who is going to memorize it? Number one, answer the question. Subhanallah. Allah's asking you. No matter how old you are, no matter where you are, no matter how much of the Quran you know, the question is directed to you from Allah. Are you going to make an effort? Wallahi, if you are going to make an effort, Allah will grant you a status known as Ahlul Quran. The people of the Quran. Who are they? Alladheena hum ahlullahi wa khasatuhu. They are the ones who are the people of Allah. The special people of Allah. The guests of Allah. Imagine you arrive on the day of judgment. May Allah make us from among those. And you are known as A. These people are all the guests of Allah. Why? They were involved their entire lives with the Quran. May Allah make us Ahlul Quran. How many khatam do we read? Let's make sure we try to memorize. And I want to tell you a tip that I've recently told the children. The best way to memorize, the simplest and easiest way to memorize. Listen to the same reciter 
the same surah again and again until you know it off by heart. The Quran has that power. The same reciter, the same surah, again and again, you know it by heart, move to the next one. Even 20 years later, you will remember the tone and the tune. You'll remember who, how they read it, where they stopped, what happened, what didn't happen. And you'll be able to mimic that tune in your old age. That's the power of the Quran. Those who know, they know what I'm talking about. But a dhikr does not only mean the memorization. It also means the understanding of the Quran has been made simple. It's been made easy. My brothers and sisters, you have to attend the tafsir lessons that happen in your communities. You have to make sure you attend some form of lessons where you are learning the meanings of the Quran. If you were to read the Arabic and you were to read the English translation of it, naturally you will understand a lot, but there will be questions in your mind because you are not a scholar. So when the question arises, you need to answer it. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says very clearly, فَاسْأَلُوا أَهْلَ الذِّكْرِ إِن كُنْتُمْ لَا تَعْلَمُونَ بِالْبَيِّنَاتِ وَالزُّبُرِ Ask the people of knowledge of the Qur'an if you don't understand the Qur'an. Ask the people who know if you don't know. Notice the word dhikr is used there as well. Dhikr is a term that's used to refer even to the Qur'an. Subhanallah. Allah says, we have revealed this dhikr and we will protect it. What is it referring to? The Quran. This evening I was speaking to a brother. May Allah grant him the acceptance to come into the fold of Islam. And I was telling him one of the primary gifts that we have is in our faith. We adjust ourselves to understand the word of Allah. I'm not going to change the word of Allah for me to understand it. I will change myself to understand the word of Allah. So what will I do? I will learn Arabic. I will make sure I go and study the Quran in its language. And I make sure I realize the value of the Arabic language. One of the reasons why Allah has made Salah in Arabic and the Quran needs to be read in Arabic. Whereas... If there were merit in reading it in any other language, he would have told you it's okay. You can read it in another language, but you cannot. I can't get up and say, all praise is due to Allah, Lord of the world. I can't do that. I have to say, Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen, Ar-Rahman, Ar-Rahim, Maliki, Yawmiddin. And I need to enjoy it wherever I am across the globe. No matter what country, nationality or language I speak, I need to read it in the Arabic language because I will never adjust the word of Allah for my convenience. I will, I will inconvenience myself if that's what you might want to look at it as. Although it's not an inconvenience, it's an honor. But still, I will make sure I adjust myself to understand and to fit in with the book of Allah, the word of Allah, and not the other way around. When it comes to people of other faiths, take a look at the Christians, for example, and we mean no disrespect. But if you look at the language spoken by Jesus, may peace be upon him, Isa alayhi salam, Aramaic, where is the Aramaic scripture? Where are the original scriptures? The debate among the Christians themselves is so huge that today they have more than 42 different versions of the Bible. Coming to our gift, and that's what we're talking about this evening. My brother, go to Honolulu. You will hear the Imam say, And you'll hear the Amin. What happened? Far away from your home. You're accustomed to this. This is Islam. Allah says, we revealed the book and we will protect it. That's a guarantee from Allah. Now I want to give you the gift. If Allah has promised that he's going to protect the book and he's proven it to you that the book is protected. It's proven. People can take away all these mushafs that we have around where the Quran is written. We will come up with it in this masjid. We'll close these doors. We won't leave until we have it back again amongst us. And I'm sure from amongst us seated here, we will pick out at least 20 people who know the Quran cover to cover. I think so. Maybe more. Subhanallah. So if you are going to make an effort to put the Quran in your heart, you are now known as a hafiz. Have you thought of what the term hafiz is? 
Hafidh, we loosely refer to it as one who's memorized the Quran. Hafidh is a one who is protected by Allah. That's who a Hafidh is. One who is protected by Allah. Why? The Quran is protecting him. How does the Quran protect you? Because Allah says, I will protect the Quran. You put it in your heart, your heart becomes protected. When you want to protect yourselves from jealousy, evil, magic, effects of the jinn, superstition, etc. What do you do? All you have to do is read a few verses of the most powerful word in existence. And you know what? Nothing will harm you. Impossible. Your ayatul kursi, read it thrice. Your three quls, as we call them, the last three surahs of the Quran, read them thrice. See the power. Nobody will be able to harm you. You feel that conviction, the strength. What happened? It's the protection that Allah is bestowing you with. Protection. The Quran is protected by Allah and because it is the word of Allah, it has within it protection for us from Allah. Subhanahu wa ta'ala, when we repeat it, when we recite it. Wallahi, I tell you, you have a hafiz of the Quran who is serious, who tries his best to fulfill the other commands of Allah. You will see the calmness in his face. You can pick it up. A lot of the elder people, the ustads and so on, you pick up a youngster, you can say this guy is either started memorizing the Quran or he has memorized the Quran and he's a relatively good Muslim. You can see it in the face. Simahum fi wujuhihim, as they say. Their signs are in their faces. You can tell this person is sober. They don't have bad habits. You can see the sparkle in the eye of what? The fact that you are clean. You don't have these dirty, bad habits. You know why? You have the Quran really in your heart. And I want to tell you something else. When you begin to learn the meanings of the Quran and you start putting it in your life, practicing and trying to teach others a little bit, a little bit, wallahi, you will lead a life filled with contentment no matter what you have. You lost your job, you lost your car, you lost your house, you lost your family, you lost whatever you lost, you will just be smiling. Alhamdulillah. Why? you have something more valuable than all of that put together. All of that put together. Wallahi, you take one word of the Quran, put it on one side. Take the whole world and whatever it has, put it on the other side. What do you think is more valuable? What do you think is more valuable? There's no question regarding what a mu'min believes. And this is why we see the elderly they generally give more time to the Quran. Today, I want to appeal to the young. Give more time to the Quran. Wallahi, your life will change. The Quran is like a master key. When you have it, it will open the doors of your business as well. It will open the doors of your marriage, your children, your dunya will be thrown at your feet because you worked on the master key. I promise you. Mark these words. The Quran is like a master key. When you have it with you and you solidify it, all the other doors will open one after the other. The condition you must be dedicated for the sake of Allah. And this is why I was so impressed tonight I came. I visit a lot of masajid. Sometimes you go in, it's a bit of an embarrassment when you hear the Huffad trying to motor through as though they are only interested in Porsches, Ferraris and Bugattis. No, no. Here, I don't mind if we come with our jalopy. It's okay, it's okay. Take our time. It's not a race. It's an honor. Wallahi, it is an honor. Do you know the time difference? Not more than five to ten minutes. Check the masjids go up to down. See them, those that speed at 200 kilometers an hour with no speeding fines. I want to tell you what happens. They displace only ten minutes. In those ten minutes, you got the pleasure of Allah or you got your own satisfaction of saying, hey, sharp shoot. We clap, we clap. What did you do for 10 minutes? Nothing, subhanallah. It's a fact of life. We need to change this perception. And wallahi, it is changing. Thank Allah. It is changing. When I heard the correctness of recitation, it touched my heart. Because I'm one, I was worried when I came. I'm telling our Qari Sahib here, Qari Naeem Sahib, I said, you know what? I'm a slow reader. 
Subhanallah, because it's, it's sometimes you feel, I don't want to compromise the words. I'd rather not be an imam. What did I say? I don't want to ruffle the feathers. Whoever's going to lead, let them lead. I'll come in, I'll do a little talk. We'll meet our brothers from a distance, etc. And we'll go. Fi sabilillah. He said, no, 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 no. You must lead at least four rakaat. I said, all right, if that's the case, bismillah. I was a bit worried. But when I heard beautiful recital, I felt at home. Mashallah, I said, no problem. Might be a little bit slower, but it'll be okay. My brothers, that's the Qur'an. It is an honor. The book of Allah. And this is why the Huffad here and elsewhere, we need to know one thing. When you are reading in the front here, you are reading for the sake of Allah. Don't ever be ashamed of being corrected. It is an honor to be corrected because it is the word of Allah. I always tell people, as soon as I make a blunder, yell out the correction. Because you know what? We don't want to be caught on the day of judgment. I don't mind people saying you made two mistakes, three mistakes. They make mistakes in the haram. They make mistakes everywhere in the world. Subhanallah, we are human. It's an honor to make a blunder. I love it when someone is there to correct you. At least you know, hey, at least I didn't mess with the Quran here. Someone corrected me. We are trained when we little to feel bad when you make a mistake. Come back, hey, please don't correct me. Let me go. Don't worry, we'll, we'll read it again in another. No, 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 no. It doesn't work like that. It's an honor to be corrected. No problem. I must be corrected because it's the word of Allah. May Allah grant us acceptance. Notice how everything I'm saying tonight is all about the Quran. Because we read those verses today. In Surah Al-Qamar. Subhanallah. That Allah has made this Quran easy to memorize, to understand. Is anyone from amongst you going to memorize and try to understand it? To put it into practice, to convey it to others. That is your duty, O believers. Allah has protected the book and by default he has protected everyone who has attempted to memorize the book or who has made an effort to teach the book Quran. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us ease. So Al-Fudayl ibn Iyad, he hears the verse. أَلَمْ يَأْنِ لِلَّذِينَ آمَنُوا أَن تَخْشَعَ قُلُوبُهُمْ لِذِكْرِ اللَّهِ وَمَا نَزَلَ مِنَ الْحَقِّ وَلَا يَكُونُوا كَالَّذِينَ أُوتُوا الْكِتَابَ مِنْ قَبْلُ فَطَالَ عَلَيْهِمُ الْأَمَدُ فَقَسَتْ قُنُوبُهُمْ Beautiful verse Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying Has the time not come? Is enough not enough? Has the time not come for the believers to stop whatever nonsense they are involved in? To soften their hearts towards the remembrance of Allah? Towards the Qur'an? To soften their hearts in the right direction? How long are you going to continue in your sin? How long are you going to continue without fulfilling your duties unto Allah? How long do you think you're going to live? How long do you think you're going to breathe for? Which one comes first? Ask yourself. Surely it's about time we turned to Allah. We are witnessing around us. So many things change so, so drastically. We don't even have a guarantee that we're going to live tomorrow. It's about time we changed. Allah says, not too late. This man changed his life. He became known as one of the scholars. He's known as one of our predecessors. When we say Al-Fudayl ibn Iyad, we say, Rahimahullah. May Allah have mercy on him. And what was he before? He was a highwayman. In our language, he was a thug. May Allah protect us. Sounds quite disrespectful, doesn't it? Someone says, hey, that guy's a thug. I mean, what does it sound like? But it goes to show it's never too late to change your bad ways and habits. Too much is happening in terms of negativity. And that's why I believe my brothers and sisters seek the forgiveness of Allah. Allahumma inna ka'afuun tuhibbul afwa fa'afu anna. And mean it with all your heart. Allah will protect you from disease and calamity. When something strikes us wholesale, one thing you need to do, repair your relation with Allah. May Allah be pleased with us. A masjid having restrictions definitely is indicative of something wrong in our relationship with Allah. Correct it. I'm not saying don't have restrictions. I'm saying why is it that we've gotten to that level? Because we never made qadr. We never valued the masjid when things were okay. We never came. We never came. How many people come for Salatul Fajr? How many for Dhuhr and Asr? And then we say, but the masjids are closed. Hang on, hang on. 
Did you thank Allah? Allah says, because you didn't, He took it away. No qadr. You didn't value it. That's why when the restrictions were lifted to a degree, I know of thousands of people who made a qasam that we will never forsake the house of Allah. Now we've realized its value. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us ease. May Allah forgive our shortcomings, our sins. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us the best Ramadan. And which is or what is the best Ramadan? The best Ramadan is that Ramadan wherein which your life has changed. People say, how do I know what is Laylatul Qadr? I spoke about it last night. I'm quickly repeating to you. When you feel something has moved in you, when you feel your life has changed, when you feel the warm tears roll down your cheeks, when you feel your hair stand, when you feel that something has made you promise Allah never to go back to your bad ways and habits, you got Laylatul Qadr. Your life changed. Your life changed. May Allah grant us a change. You know your weaknesses, I know mine. We don't need to go out and advertise each other's weaknesses. We want Allah to help us so that when we die, something good happens. What is it? The Prophet ﷺ, best of creation, most noble of all prophets, he did not need to seek the forgiveness of Allah or to ask him, Oh Allah, give me Jannah. He didn't need to say that. He's the first one who's going to enter. But you know what he said? Allahumma ja'al khayra ayyamina awakhiraha wa khayra a'malina khawatimaha Oh Allah, let the best of our days be the last days. And let the best of our deeds be the last deeds. Make that dua. You don't know when you're going to die. Would you like to die with a bottle in your hand? Would you like to die while committing adultery? Would you like to die whilst watching pornography? Would you like to die at gambling? Would you like to die having deceived or done so many bad things? Would you like to die doing all sorts of transgression against Allah? The answer is obviously no. Well, then you need to make sure that you don't find yourself in that condition, number one, and you constantly ask Allah, Oh Allah, let our best deeds be the last deeds. And what is the best deed that you could have? Just as you leave. Allahumma ja'al akhira kalamina min ad dunya. La ilaha illa Allah. Oh Allah, let the last statement that comes out of our mouths before you take our lives away be La ilaha illa Allah. Muhammadur Rasulullah. Amin. Ameen Ya Rabbi. May Allah grant us shahada at the point of death and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala elevate our status in this dunya and in the akhirah. Brothers and sisters, a few hours remaining for the month of Ramadan. Make the most of it. It's not too late. We can also hear one verse and change our lives. Umar ibn al-Khattab radiallahu anhu and enemy at one stage he heard one verse two verses the opening verses of surah taha from an enemy outright enemy who wanted to murder to a man who was ready to give his own life to protect allahu akbar in one moment an najashi in abyssinia what happened allah mentions the tears when he heard the quran when I read that verse, I tell myself, we are born Muslims in many cases. Have we ever cried at the verses of the Quran? Here's a man, he wasn't even a Muslim, he accepted Islam. But at that time, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَإِذَا سَمِعُوا مَا أُنزِلَ إِلَى الرَّسُولِ تَرَى أَعْيُنَهُمْ تَفِيضُ مِنَ الدَّمْعِ مِمَّا عَرَفُوا مِنَ الْحَقِّ يَقُولُونَ رَبَّنَا آمَنَّا فَاكْتُبْنَا مَعَ الشَّاهِدِينَ Allah says when they heard the verses that were revealed by Allah, to the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, you find their eyes filling up with tears from what they recognized as being the truth. And they said, O oh, our Lord, we believe. So write our names from amongst those who bore witness. May Allah write our names. That same verse I spoke about regarding Al-Fudayl ibn Iyab, towards the end it says, don't be like the people of the book. What did they do? 
For a long time they just transgressed and so what happened their hearts became hard. Then they were not interested in turning back to Allah and their generations were the same. Don't let your heart harden on sin. How do you know your heart is hardening? When sin does not make you regret anymore, then you've got a problem. Then you've got a major problem. First time you committed a sin, eh, you didn't want to be seen, you didn't want anything, you regretted it, you cried a little bit, you went back, you made two rakat, you cried back to Allah. It was a good sign because your iman brought you back. Then you sin again, iman becomes weaker, weaker, weaker. Then what happens? Then you sin openly and you're proud of it. You put it on TikTok. What? You show people your sin and you're advertising it. Ooh, we've got a problem. We've got a massive problem. It's a fact. I see the youngsters smiling because you know what I'm talking about. That's the reason. They say it's called tick tock because time goes tick tock and it's gone. You sit with that thing. You think you sat for five minutes. You sat for one hour. All you did was watch a load of rubbish. And then what happened? The hour was gone. What happened? It ticked and it talked. That's all. In Islam, we have value of time. Time is a creature of Allah. Allah gave you a blessing of time. Ni'matani maghboonun fihima kathirum minan nas. As-sihhatu wal-faragh. The Prophet ﷺ says two gifts of Allah that many people are deceived by and only realize when it's too late. Good health, spare time. In your spare time, do something constructive. You won't get it again. Do something constructive. And can I teach you something? Because the young people will say, I can't sit with the Quran all the time when I got free time. I need to do something else. Recreation. Okay, okay, we've heard you. At least in your free time, do not sin. That's a good starting point. Right? May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless every one of us. Again, as usual, I was only supposed to speak for a short period of time. But you know what? Seeing all my beloved brothers here with these beautiful faces, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gather us in Jannatul Firdaus. And may Allah make this Ramadan a Ramadan with a change. You know, last year we were not able to do this. Do you recall? This is a gift of Allah. This is His house. We are honored to be among His guests in this house five times a day. May Allah accept us to be his guests. It is an honor. How does Allah accept you? He puts it in your heart. Just go. And then shaitan comes and says, no, 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 it'll get late. Just go. No, no, but it'll get late. Just go. No, but you're going to see that guy. You know, you had a business deal with him, a problem. No, no, no. Just go. Forget everything. You see, you take your shoes off outside. You know what that is? Your connection with dunya. You leave it at the door. When you come in here, it's love. It's all about Allah. It's all about getting close to Allah, worshipping Allah. That's a masjid. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless every one of us. Aqulu qawli hadha wa sallallahu wa sallama wa baraka ala nabina Muhammad. Subhanallahi bihamdihi subhanakallahumma bihamdik. Nashhadu an la ilaha illa anta. Nastaghfiruka wa natubu